Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the monthly Contour community meeting. I am Jonas Rosland, I'll be your host today. With us we have the Contour team and the Contour community and uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of really cool upcoming stuff. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here with the uh, um, community meeting agenda um, so Dave and team can talk around it. And if you have any questions, please just post them in the chat, or if you would rather speak up, please do so. And um, yeah, let me share my screen. All right. So Dave, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, okay, so what have, been, what have we been doing in the last, um, the last four or five weeks? Um, Let's start with some housekeeping stuff. Uh, there, I intimated uh, last time we spoke that there's just a kind of bunch of procedural things that we, um, we have to do. I mean, the Heptio brand's going away. Um, that has a whole lot of um, not knock on effects, but what we've, what we've been doing out of there is, is making hay and centralizing and consolidating uh, our branding and our messaging around this idea of Project Contour. So Project Contour is the Project Contour IO is the domain for the project. Um, we've also, we've moved the repository to Project Contour. Um, just uh, uh, to, r r rather than just, well, we have to we have to rename the thing anyway, let's try and make it make it useful. So that's, um, uh, if you have, you know, GitHub's pretty good at the redirections, um, and there's, a, there's an announcement in, in our blog post. Um, honestly, I, I don't think anyone's really gonna know, really gonna notice, but it was part of the, um, part of the housekeeping we needed to do to um, to continue to move away from the Heptio brand. Um, equal to that, um, we also moved our image repository hosting to the Docker Hub. Um, and for people on the call, this has uh, um, this ha this has some impact. Um, we'll continue to publish what we consider to be the stable release, which is 0 0.15, um, to both GCR.io and the Docker Hub, but um, the quick start images and our image hosting and what we consider to be the the, um, the master tag that comes out of um, comes out of CI is all happening on the Docker Hub. So um, even if you're not uh, even if you're not going to follow us on uh, the Contour One beta beta journey for the moment, you want to sit and wait for the stable release. It'd still be a good idea to update um, where you're pulling the images from because um, eventually I, I don't know when. I mean. It's not going to be tomorrow, but it will be eventually that um, the billing account that holds up this GCR Hefty images might go, might go away or might change to private or something like that. Um, so this is a good opportunity to, um, to make that transition. That's um, most of the housekeeping things. Um, I'll pause here for a second just in case and it was like, you move my stuff, where is it? Um, Cool, um, good, that's all the housekeeping out of the way. So the main event today is uh, talking about um, the, the, the uh, our first beta of Control 1.0. Um, we'll talk a little bit later in the kind of general release, release cadence, what's gonna happen over the next couple of months. But this is the, um, this is the big, this is the big enchilada. This is what we've been working for towards, um, for a couple of months you've seen us uh, you, you've seen us putting a, a lot of effort into finalizing feature set in 0 to 14 and 0 to 15. And now we're very deeply into polishing up this, this release. Um, this, has, this has a bunch of, um, uh, obviously, new, new release of software, new features, new bug fixes, blah, blah, blah. We can talk about that later. Um, but the, probably the thing to take to use the time we have today is to talk about um, what calling Contour 1.0 means for uh, our other projects, namely Ingress Route, which has been in beta for a long time. The short, the short answer to that is Ingress Route is deprecated. We are not going to be adding any new features to it. Bug fixes are, you know, to, uh, uh, unless they're a screaming clanger, like if it's a, a misunderstanding rather than a bug release, it's unlikely we'll, we'll address, that, address that now. We will continue to keep support for the Ingress Route CRD through 1.0 when we get to, and it'll be removed after 1.0 so in the 1.1 frame or whatever like that um, we haven't really put put a straight timeline in that but really 
ingress route is um, uh, is deprecated. Now that sounds like that sounds like a really big kind of like whoa you've just you've just like turned off the whole reason for having contour, um, but actually turns out that's that's not true. Uh, we have we have a replacement and. Um, the reason we say it's a replacement rather than just like beta 2 or a new version of ingress route is um, partially to do with uh, having to remove like uh, contour.heptio.com from names of CIDs and things like that. But we also took the opportunity to think about the, just what the name ingress route suggests, um, suggests to, to users coming in off the street to people who are comparing contour against other solutions who are trying to figure out where it fits in the you know the miasma of all the Kubernetes networking solutions, um, and the very strong statement we're making is by calling it our replacement HTTP proxy. This is what Contour is. Remember, what's our catchphrase? Contour is not a service mesh. And if it's not a service mesh, then what is it? And it's quite literally a HTTP proxy. Our space is layer seven. We want to. We are the middleware between your remote clients and your Kubernetes web applications running in your cluster. So calling to so take the opportunity to not just change the, um, the group name from contour.vmware.com to project contour, but actually looking at how we me you know, message the name of the key feature um, to make it very, very clear uh, what space we're in uh, is, is, part of, is part of preparing for, um, preparing for contour 1.0. So that, that's my long soapbox about why I decided to change the name and how I convinced other people to, to come along with me. But what I want to do now is pause for a little bit, stop talking and free you from listening to the drilling in the background. And I want to hand it over to the engineer who's been leading the design on this, Steve, um, who probably has just read that I've said demo time here. And I'm really hoping that uh, he could demo some stuff and especially point out that even though we've renamed it and moved it, there actually isn't that much difference between HTTP, uh, between ingress route and HTTP proxy. And the differences are hopefully positive ones, which we'll, which we'll come to. So I'm going to hand it over to Steve. That's okay. <laughs> I, haven't, I, I haven't talked to Steve about this beforehand. <laughs> so this is, this is my, my, my classic thing of dropping him in at the last minute. Yeah, it's all good. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I saw that and I started to build up some dummy things. So um, yeah, thank you, Jonas. I'm going to go and share, share my screen here. Let's make this one easier to see. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> um, where to start? So, real quick, we'll just go ahead and do a um, quick control get CRDs, right? And we'll see now there's a new CRD that got created. So, this is H HTTP proxies, right? So, much similar to how we had ingress routes, you can see now we've moved the, um, the API spec from Heptio to Project Contour. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll just walk through a couple little demos of, of how this looks and feels now. Um, and again, if you're familiar with ingress route, this will feel much the same. Uh, with a couple little caveats and twists of how this looks. So um, here's a very simple um, proxy that we have here. Uh, and you notice that this looks similar where we have you know, a virtual host. So my, my host is kind.local. I'm running this locally on my Mac um, with a kind cluster. Um, I have services now that I can route to, but I have this new item in the spec, which is called conditions. Um, and previously we saw this, this was just prefix when you define the, the path prefix for the routes. Um, but now they're called conditions, and this is because we can do more than just path prefix routing now. Um, we can also do things with header routing, which is kind of cool, and we'll, we'll look at that here in a second. Um, but just for fun, let's go ahead and run this one. So if we go ahead and get our proxies, you can see I have no, no proxies at all. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this. So I will coup control apply delegation. Cool. So now if we go ahead and get our proxies, you'll see I've got another one here, and this is a valid proxy. Again, looks very similar. Um, if I go ahead and curl and do kind.local, what you'll see here is that it works, which is, which is pretty cool, right? So I have my service, which is called the echo service, and it echoes back. This is the root. This is telling me that this is the root um, proxy here in, in my example. Um, but what I can do now is I can expand on this. So I'll go ahead and, and pull the cake out of the oven, and we'll, we'll bring this up. Um, and what we can do now is I can add some different conditions. So let's go ahead and add some headers. So in addition to routing this on slash, what we'll do is we'll make this, get my YAML right. So now what we can do is we can route on slash as well as having the header, X header, exactly matching ABC. 
in the request. So now both of these have to exist for this request to route. So now if I apply this one, uh, cool, we applied that. So if I do the same curl, I get a 404, right? And that's because we told Envoy, hey, our conditions must meet all of these, um, or our request has to meet all of these conditions, which in this example is slash, as well as X header meaning exactly ABC. Um, if we go ahead and do the request and add that header, then we should work here. So we'll add a um, so X header ABC, right? And there we go. Now my, my request got routed through correctly just because um, you know, I have the proper, proper pieces on there. Um, to make this a little, a little better, let's go ahead and, and solve all requests that don't match that header. So we wanna match um, a request with the header ABC and then have everything else default to another service. So if I go ahead and look at my services, Let's go ahead and we'll do QWERTY. That's a good example there. So um, we'll come to here and we'll just add another route, right? And we'll say this is gonna be, um, and actually if I wanted, I could leave off conditions because um, that's assumed that if not, it's assumed slash. So we'll go ahead and make this, yeah, QWERTY and then support 80. Cool. So now what this is gonna do is I have two different routes in my, in my proxy here. I've got one that says, hey, slash with the header routes to the echo service. And then everything else was just slash is gonna route to the QWERTY service. So go ahead and apply that one. Okay, so now if I do my curl with the header, I should get the root one. And then hopefully if I take out the header, um, I should get QWERTY, which this is QWERTY. That's all the, um, it's all the JavaScript coming up. Cool, so that, that, that's kind of um, a basic example of how you can in put in um, conditions, right? And we can have as many, as, many, as many of these as we'd like. If I wanted to, I could have um, another one that says like um, contains ABC, or maybe it contains you know, DEF or something. Um, and this means that it has to be somewhere in that header, DEF. So this might be good for like a user agent. So maybe I wanna say like user agent, um, whoops, sorry. My name is user agent. And maybe this one contains Chrome. Yeah, something like that where I want to match on different browsers. Maybe I want to match on like iOS versus Android or something. Um, so th those are all total possibilities now. And these, these can, you know, go on forever as long as you understand that these, all these requests have to match for it to, to route to this proper place. Um, okay, so let's make this a little more interesting. Um, let's introduce a new thing. So before in Ingress route, we had this idea of delegation. And delegation said, um, I have this ingress route and I'm gonna delegate a path off to another resource. And this is helpful for teams, right? So now teams could manage their ingress resources safely within a cluster and not have to worry about conflicting um, paths and, and stomping over each other and breaking things. Um, so we kind of took that idea and, and flipped it around. And, and instead of using this idea of delegation, we're using this idea of includes. Um, and what an include does, this follows kind of how you would might include a file in a coding language, right? So I can say, you know, my C++ program includes this other file. And then when this gets processed, we take that include and we'd stick it in, into that request and then smash that together and then come up with um, that result, right? So we can include all these different attributes and, and get them passed off to different, different resources now. Um, so let's go ahead and add this down here. So what I can say now is I can say, um, I have these set of includes, and now we're gonna do some you know, delegation like we did in ingress route. So I'm gonna say, hey, this resource is www site in the namespace team A, and I'm gonna give them some, some includes. So I'm gonna say, hey, you get slash blog, um, and let's just take the header off for now and make this simple for now. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna add this resource and say, hey, this resource includes this, this um, include, right? And then we'll go down here and we'll create that other resource as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this. And then let's make this a little more simpler. Um, okay, sorry, this is my last minute demo setup, so that's why <laughs> things are jumping around. Um, cool, so what I have now is I'm gonna say um, www site in team A, and here's the resource for that, right? And we're just gonna say, um, let's just take this out as well. We're just gonna say that this routes to the echo service, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and create these two things. Cool. So now if we um, go ahead and get our um, proxies and we'll do this with slash a, which is my new for cut, you'll see I have two um, and I've broken it because I don't have proper delegation. What did I do? 
Oh, this just have to go up. W.site.team.a. W.site.team.a. No. Hmm. Why did it not do? Oh, I'm missing a dots or something. I bet. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. YAML. <laughs> you need three dots to separate them. All right. Let's go ahead and apply that now. Okay. Now I have two. So now if we go ahead and get these. Okay. Good. Now I have. Okay. We're good now. So now I have two proxies, right? And I have the root, which is kind of local, and I have the second one now for this team. Again, what I did was I said. Um, this proxy here now has an include of slash blog. So any request to slash blog is going to go to the echo service in the team A namespace. So if we go ahead and do a request to um, slash blog, we'll see now this is the green one. So green, green, greens. So that's in the team A namespace. Right, but all I, all, as a user, all I see in this spec is that I have um, just this is my, my proxy now, right? So because of the includes, I now have that passed off to them similarly. Um, but what's neat is now I can add other things like I can make require headers. So if I needed maybe an auth header on every request to my backend services or backend um, proxies, I could do this now. So now we're going to pass off two conditions to this team. We're going to include a prefix of slash blog as well as a prefix of this X header ABC. All right, and let's do this contains just for fun. Okay, so we'll go ahead and apply that. So now any request to this proxy must match these conditions first before it gets processed in. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay, so now if I do the same curl, um, I get 404 because um, I'm mashing slash blog. Now if I added the proper header, which I think is ABC here, um, this should work. So we'll do slash header, X header is ABC. Right, and now I get the blue one. which I got green before, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. Dave's killing me here with this last minute demo, so I apologize for that. This is fun though, right? We can, we can work on this together. And that's why we're still in alpha, because <laughs> um, we're getting through that. But you can get the idea, right? So this header is going to get passed off as well. Um, I'm not sure why I'm getting that one. Um, we take this off and apply. If I curl this again, we get the green one, which is what we thought we should get. Oh no, now what did I do? Okay. Um, where's the echo service? That's all commented out. Let's take this header off. I might have something with that. And put this back. Right, so we had kind of matching headers on slash and slash blog, which might be a condition we should look for as I think through this. Um, configure, configure. So let's try that again. So now I should require the header. And there's the green one. Okay, I think there's an issue there. We'll have to mark that down. To, <laughs> um, I had conflicting basically routes where I had two prefixes with the same, same request pattern. Um, so good, that's, that's good, we found something. Uh, but you can see here, just to make my demo make sense now, what I'm saying is I have basically, I'm taking these includes, so these conditions are getting passed off to this other ingress or, or HTTP, HTTP proxy. That makes sense. And we can, we can go on further if we'd like to, we could do the same thing. So now that I have these conditions, I can have more includes that this one passes off again, right? And then again, it becomes the sum of all of the includes that happen. Um, so if I had more, more includes here, you know, this would get passed off as well. Um, so I could say maybe slash foo goes to here. So now I include this to um, dub dub dub, and now we'll bring this one back. Team A slash, okay. So now what we can say is. Um, Don't forget the three dashes. Yeah, good call, thank you. Put that back, why are you unhappy? Bad indentation, conditions, I think that's fine. Um, okay, so now what should happen, let's just make sure that works. No, I didn't. Not seen it. Oh, this is too far. Okay, cool. Um, so now what we have to make this whole thing make sense. Let's just kill this for you. So now we have slash goes to the echo service. And we're going to say um, slash blog with this header ABC is included to this 
proxy. And now this proxy is saying, I'm going to take that and I'm going to add more conditions and pass that off to this other proxy here, this dub 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 one, which is this one down here. So resulting one should be um, slash blog slash foo should match to this proxy. And I was also with the header, if that makes sense. Right, so we applied it. Let's go ahead and get our proxies to make sure they're all there. There we go, we have all three of them and they're all valid. So now if I do a get request um, for blog, this should still be greens, right? Now if I do slash blog slash foo, this should be the blues. And it's not. What did I do? That's blog slash foo. Um, two. Are the paths additive yet, Steve? I didn't think we'd put in the the um, path munging yet. Yeah, that should all be there. Yep, yep. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll work through it. But this this is the idea of how it should work. I don't want to kill time and see you debug this because um, I've I've been smashing the CM all around on the screen as you can see. Uh, but the idea is that this final this final proxy again. I'm just trying to demonstrate that the all the includes will get chained together. Will get will get included all together, um, all the conditions on the includes, right? So the resulting result for this one should be a request with slash header x header abc, which is what we defined up here in this first one. X header is abc, and then the prefix slash blog as well as slash foo should get passed off to this one in team a. Um, it bugs me why that's showing up. Oh, there it is. That's interesting. So it is the blues. So I'm not sure if I'm not sure what's up with that, but that updated. So you can see that, right? So slash blog slash foo is that one. Um, and if we add take slash foo off, we should get green. And if we take this off, we should get the root. Yep. And I could go on forever. You know, I could add more conditions if I wanted to um, by adding more headers and stuff. Um, you know, on this final one, if I needed to, to say. Maybe I needed, um, you know, Steve contains Sloka. We'll apply that. And now this final one should be slash blog slash foo. This should should um, have to route to Steve Sloka to get to the blues. Cool. Again, I'm not sure why we have this, this funky um, thing, but that's the idea. So I'll work out this demo and make this better for next time. Um, and we'll have some better examples that I can, I can walk through with y'all. Um, did I think I cover everything, Dave? I think I'm pretty sure without describing it more in detail with the docs that we wrote. Yeah, um, maybe. Okay. First thing, thank you very much for doing that demo. Um, sorry for putting, putting you on the spot. Okay. Um, the, 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 the big picture is that, um, like we, we've been working very hard on this, um, for, well, I was going to say since since the since zero to fifteen, but it's it's been it's been months that we've been um, workshopping these ideas and these designs, and we've been following the um, the PIs. You can see uh, you can see the the process of iteration we've we've been through. But now is now is the time that we really want feedback from from you from people uh, in the Contour user community, um, so that um, you can tell us do these ideas make sense? And um, maybe if you can flip back to the uh, the uh, the overview screen who's ever driving um, is, is a good this is a good time to talk about the documentation that we've uh, that we've written um, as, as as Steve suggested the transition from HTTP from ingress route to HTTP proxy um, there are two new ideas there is uh, inclusion which replaces delegation and there's this idea of conditions which is a more generalized form of the straight up match keyword that we used to have before um, but for uh, for the ingress route users, uh, we've we've written a, uh, a basically a, an upgrading guide. So basically, if you had this before, use this before. And if you scroll down a bit, you can see that both basically very very few things have changed. There are some stuff to call out for the name of um, objects. Uh, TLS certificate delegation has obviously changed as well, um, and there are changes to routing. But most of the other ones say no change because they are just straight. A straight one-to-one -one transitions. You you'll be able to change your YAML and you'll be up up and going again. You can see the actual delta is pretty it's pretty small between it. Um, in terms of our 
HTTP proxy. The to, to, to step back a little bit, the idea um, of inclusion is um, is delegation. I mean, and we, we, we kind of say the two um, uh, kind of interchangeably. It's still it's still the notion of delegate. I delegate to that group over there to write that part of the configuration, and I will include it in mine. That's 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 a way of thinking about it. Um, the notion, the notion of the of stacking of conditions um, comes from say say you 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 probably using um, if you're using delegation to uh, with like the root namespaces feature that we added to say I'm the administrator I control the TLS parameters and the uh, the, the the setup of this virtual host and then delegate off to the actual application group for managing the application. Um, that's that's still still the same model. Conditions are a way of saying if I delegate over to you, I want to potentially restrict some of the things that you can do. Um, Steve, Steve's example is saying I want to make sure that there is a you know XAuth authentication header on every request that is handled by that application. Is a kind of policy decision that administrator administrator might might make. And so the way the way that we conceptualize the way that inclusion and condition works together is you're including uh, you're including parts of other fragments of configuration and combining the conditions that they have like their matching conditions of i need this header i need this prefix or the suffix or whatever with your own conditions and so that we feel retains the um the i the, the idea of delegation i only want to delegate a part of this you saw an example um that steve had where he delegated um he included uh, from uh, the the green application from another namespace, uh, but also included, but also in that inclusion, added a condition that said everything starts with slash blog. So that's the that's the way that um, in the old Ingress route world you would have delegated slash blog to somebody else. Um, in 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 the in the simple case, like in in in, in the, uh, the 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 case that matches what we have with Ingress route. Um, we, we feel this is a pretty straight transition. Like you, you, you take off, you take off your match slash blog and you replace it with conditions, prefixes slash blog, pretty straightforward. But there are things which, um, both internal and external users have been asking us for, for a long time, which is more flexible routing and conditions is a way of exposing that in a way that can be composed together because when you're including different configuration from things you have to have a way of uh, making the sum of the, uh, the the sum of all the conditions both those on the target and those which are being included by um, and so that that brings us back to um, HP proxy documentation um, we are working very hard to get th these are all draft documents at the moment we're working very hard to get them um, polished up by the end of the week um, and the, the the information that we want to transmit will be um, will be in them um, the last one, if you can just go back to the previous screen, is um, we have a bunch. We also have an upgrade, uh, an upgrade guide for uh, just straight upgrade tasks. In, in the background, Nick Young has been doing um, a lot of work on uh, uh, leadership that we talked about um, last last time we met. Um, leadership leadership is evolving. We've moved away from the restrictions of having to have a single a single master, and it now behaves um, the way Nick likes to describe it as proper Kubernetes. Um, leadership, which is uh, they choose they choose a leader, but all of them are, all of them are read only slaves. And where that will manifest itself by the time we get to one dot oh is there'll be one contour which will uh, elect itself the leader, and it will um, it, it will be responsible for writing status back. Um, status remains um, one of one of our, our longest longest running issues. Uh, and the last the last bullet point there is. Um, Contour 0 0.15 remains our latest stable release. Um, this, this is, uh, again, this, this kind of difficult teenage phase where we're moving from the you know, monthly point release cadence that we had before to this, um, this polishing and, and beta, and, beta and, and least candidate process where 0 0.15 is going to stay our latest for the next couple of months, certainly until November. Um, I imagine that we'll be doing one or two point releases to 0 0.15. I don't know. Um, I don't know what they are, when, when we'll be doing that at the moment, but it seems reasonable that if we're going to stay, say this is the stable release, we're going to have to do some, um, some uh, maintenance on it over, over time. So the key, the key thing is that the latest tag um, still points to 0 0.15. Um, we're not 
uh, we, we're not going to tag our betas and our release candidates as latest and just going to drop drop them on people um, because they're not just there is a significant upgrade delta um, but also like we're we're removing we, we are deprecating this route we're introducing a replacement we're doing um, some things which we'd like you to opt in to um, conscientiously rather than just dropping them on you and be like well good luck mm -hmm. so um, that is that's pretty much the the, the wrap of what's happening in 1.0. Um, I believe a bit bit lower down is a link to the draft release notes, which again has a different take on this um, this information. Um, so maybe this is a good time. What are we doing with time? Oh yeah, this is, this is a good time to pause if there are questions. And I hope hopefully there are some um, about stuff we presented today. Hi, Michael here. Um, so I think I, I think I get sort of I was interested in sort of the reasons why you're sort of switching from ingress route to HTTP proxy, and I think I I get that now. You know, from a timing point of view, it's not great for us just in that we're going we're hoping to go GA or generally available for our platform in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to have to uh, do a migration from Nginx across to Contour and then across to HTTP proxy. And then we've also got some outstanding issues, which I don't know whether we want to go in here, like things like the fallback and SNI health checking and stuff like that. So I think this is good, but you know, timing's not great for us, but we can work through that. But uh, thanks for the background on sort of why you're making the change. Yeah, um, I'm, let, let, let me apologize for that. I mean, there so, some, some of these are mechanical transitions forced on us by companies being bought by other companies. Um, even if we were not renaming Ingress Route to HTTP proxy, um, the the change from the change from delegation to inclusion, which um, sounds sounds big, it is actually isn't. It's, it's more straightforward. Um, like includes are a top level item now. They're no longer a weird thing tucked under a route, which just never made sense. Um, Conditions um, are what people have been asking us for a long time. Um, they want they want to be able to do more than just match on a prefix, um, and so we needed to create a space in the YAML to in 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 the YAML to do that. Um, so let me. Um, I, I, I've said that we we're, we're going to keep support for ingress route uh, 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 around, but. Um, it is difficult to backport features into it because literally there's no holes. And just like in the kind of Python 2 to Python 3 transition, we don't want to keep the old deprecated version around and uh, in and continue to kind of backport features to it because it will discourage people from moving off it in the first place. Um, we, sh we should definitely talk offline about um, how long ingress route stays around, but the uh, that is not uh, like it, it's it's not just that is not where our focus is at the moment. It is that to deliver the features that people have been asking for, we literally don't have the spots in the old ingress route YAML. Like it's not structured in a way that will let us do that. Um, there is no way uh, to uh, we, we 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 could we could add header matching kind of like keys to route objects, but the the, that would suggest somehow it's possible to delegate on a header, which um, was it was a piece of design that chipped us up for months. It just didn't make any sense. And so by separating the idea of the conditions, which are the things that match on, and the includes, which are which configuration do I grab from other namespaces, um, we think that we've created uh, something that makes more sense than just sticking delegation as a kind of pseudo service. Like you either send the traffic to a service or you send it to a delegate. That just wasn't 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 scalable. Um, but yeah, let's 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 definitely talk offline about um, a reasonable a reasonable deprecation plan. Like there, there, there's issues between not uh, not continuing to not continue to try and uh, like continue to try and uh, backport bug fixes ingress into ingress out and removing the ingress out completely. We can definitely talk about that, that offline. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I, I think from our point of view, I also sort of, uh, what we maybe need to think about is, is hold off now, cut across the contour as the primary until we get HTTP proxy just to stop that churn. I'm not worried about keeping ingress route alive forever, like, you know, deprecate stuff and get rid of it, right? It's just a 
hard to maintain and for all the reasons you just went through. Um, it's just got to work out to our sort of rollout and, and what it means for the, for the users. Yeah, uh, again, I'm, I'm, uh, did we lose yeah. him? You're muted, Dave. If, if it's of any consolation, um, yeah. I, so let me go back to the bit where I apologize for it. No, um, no, there's, there's, no need to, <laughs> there's no need to apologize. There's always going to be someone that hits the bad timing. It just happens to be yeah. me this time. So no, don't worry about it. Um, but the, 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 to, to give some justification for why we're um, moving quickly to this is when we get to wonder, oh, this is like one dollar of a product. Like we're, this is our opportunity to get serious about backwards compatibility, serious about creating a stable foundation that people can build Kubernetes objects that last for years on. Um, this, hopefully, by taking the pain now, we can create a more stable place like, like, like I, I'm very serious when I say 1.0 is, like, that's why I want to go to a 1.0, not this zero dot something, something kind of not non-committalist. Um, so th this, this is building, this is our attempt to build a foundation for documents that, uh, uh, Kubernetes documents that uh, Contour users can live with for, well, hopefully years. Um, but years seems like a long, a long time frame in the Kubernetes life, lifetime being only five years old. But um, this, this, this is the goal. Like we, we, we're packing on the churn a little bit, a little bit quickly here to try and create some stability later on. Cool. Okay. Um, are, any, are there any other questions? Um, okay, well, let me, let, me, let me continue with the, um, the release theme for the moment, which is um, beta one this Friday. Um, we really were really pushing hard to get it out last Friday. The, the, the truth was um, we, weren't, we weren't quite ready and rather than um, push it out in, in, in a state that would have meant we only had to do uh, another release the week later to be like, oh yeah, these, these quite obvious bugs. Um, we opted to take another week, give it a bit more polish, especially um, we're not actually coding this much. We're, we're trying to get the documentation into a, into a form because code runs on service, but you, the documentation needs to be informed that you can make, make, make use of. If you can't understand how you do it, you're not going to be able to give us good feedback and it's the, a lot of the effort is wasted. Um, after that, we're going to move into a series of release candidates. Um, release candidate one, um, it's about two weeks, two weeks from now. Um, second one, we'll do another, we'll probably have enough time in October to do a second release candidate. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like we're going to do a third release candidate. Like hopefully by that time, we've got the delta down, the delta down pretty low um, to the point that some, somewhere in November, um, we'll, 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 we'll be getting, getting to the point where we, we put the 1.0 moniker on it. And the big plan is that we'll see everyone um, in San Diego. Um, I know Steve and Nick will be there. Tom, Tim will be there um, for, the, for the Contour release party. So that's the, that's the kind of... Um, but the both the horizon that I can see as far as November, um, and also to say, well, this is what we're really focusing on um, for the moment, and then we're going to take a step a step back. I know there are there are a lot of open issues on the backlog, and we've been prioritizing kind of uh, trying to stabilize the features that we have now rather than continuing to add into into that set. But after one day, there will be definitely a time of taking stock and saying, what are the big things that we can add to the product? What are the big problems that um, your, that Contour users have that, that we can solve in, in hopefully in a more holistic way rather than um, rather than paying kind of feature whack-a-mole we can look at the big the bigger issues around authentication uh, around a big one that I want to look into is um, observ observability um, I want to go back and take a serious look at our metrics I think um, they're a bit kind of uh, sporadic at the moment and so in terms of the administrators who are looking after contour clusters, do they have the, do they have the information they need to help them give us the right debug information they need if we need to get involved to, do, to help um, other, to, to help their users when they say, look, you know, I deployed this um, HTTP proxy object, I can't figure out why, or my application's throwing 500. So like, like, give them those operability tools. That's definitely something that I want to look into. Um, but that, that's, that's something we'll probably talk about probably talk more about um, after KubeCon or certainly after the next um, call. So 
maybe, I mean, we're getting close to the prepared notes that I have. Are there any other, um, uh, are there any, any questions at all? Um, so let me let, let me close then on um, please please give us feedback about H two Proxy. You can give that to us in any form that you like. You can nag us on Twitter. You can come onto the Kubernetes Slack. You can raise Git. You can raise GitHub issue. You can you, you, you can find you find you can find a particular comment and get um, commit in GitHub that you don't like and leave a comment there. All feedback is is warmly warmly welcomed because this this is the document that we're um, we, we, we're pretty confident we've been. We've been road testing these ideas internally for a couple of months, um, even though it looks like it'd be changed because it seems to be a whole, a whole new object. If you look at the upgrading guide, you can see that almost all of the ideas have been brought over from Ingress. It's really been the notions of inclusion and conditions, which are the, 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 the two changes. Um, of course, bug reports when we received, the, the main thing we're gonna be working on up, um, um, outside of uh, documentation and examples and all that good stuff is uh, is uh, uh, the, the the spit and polish around um, status around imp improving our test suite around end-to-end -end tests to really try and um, shake out as many bugs as we can out of the product we have fixed in the last two releases the the issue count hasn't gone below 100 which is kind of a psychological blow to me but um, the, the, the number of uh, long-standing issues in terms of um, either niggling ones or correctness ones, we've fixed an awful lot of them um, over the last two releases. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about the, the uh, fidelity and the quality um, of, uh, of, of the product. Um, we have uh, help, uh, the good old help wanted and good first issues um, uh, on, on uh, uh, on, on, on GitHub, there are always, um, I mean, contributions are always welcome. There's always um, issues tagged there if you want to get involved in the pro project. Um, there's a really interesting one about um, setting up YAML Lint. I added YAML. Um, YAML is everyone's favorite programming language. Um, and I added a, a, a YAML Lint target um, to it, uh, to, to the, the make file recently. I would love it if we could by 1.0 make that be, um, actually turn that on as part of CI. Um, there are a ton of niggling YAML because YAML syntax is, um, gives you no guidance whatsoever. There are a ton of little niggling things that we need to address. These are not correctness issues. These are literally just like two spaces versus one and a tab versus a space and all that other annoying stuff in YAML. Um, but we need to address all of those before we can make that YAML in target um, the, the default. Um, that, that's just one of the, one of the places that um, if you're interested in getting involved, um, involved in the project, and uh, yeah, th those are all the ways that you can um, get in contact with us. Um, if there aren't any questions, I may um, we, we may call this may call this here, and I'll, I'll give you back fifteen minutes of your life. Um, I I do have a um, yes a quick question for both Dave and Steve actually. So, looking at HTTP proxy here, we we have the beta coming out uh, on Friday. Uh, would you say uh, uh, the all the documentation and everything uh, is uh, stable enough to uh, do a quick blog post on the demo that you had there, Steve, uh, similar to the kind blog post that you did earlier uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, just so people can see, hey, here's the new HTTP proxy that's gonna be default in 1.0. Um, here's how you can start playing around with it already. Uh, do you think that would be a good idea? Uh, absolutely, and to talk a little bit more about um, one of the things that um, uh, I I want to improve over the, over the next month, like we have October for this this polishing, I want to improve over that time is to move our documentation from being this kind of very factual. This is the name of this is the this is the name of the field. These are the values that it accepts. To talk more about um, solutions. To talk more about how do I, you know, like to, to, to take, take the questions that someone might, um, might ask on a call like this or might come to Slack or might just talk to their, uh, talk to someone in the community about like, they, they, talk, they come with a problem. They say, how can, I, how can I make sure that only these users can edit the configuration of this website? How can I 
do blue green deployment? Um, how can I smoke test new version of application? This is something I um, totally forgot to mention. Um, one of the one of the features that we added was uh, mirroring support. So you can nominate one of your backends. So you have the standard service stanza, uh, and you can nominate one of those as a mirror. This is a feature that Envoy's had for a long time. Um, it's something that I wanted to turn on for the the longest time. But basically, it lets you it will send to it will send a copy of any incoming traffic to a second application to to a, to a second pod. It then throws away the response. So basically, you can have um, an application running. You, you can consider it read-only mode, or you consider it if you wanted to smoke test a new version of your application using live traffic without that live traffic, you know, without actually that traffic going back to the user. Um, mirror mode is a really good way of doing this. I mean, this comes from the idea of port mirroring, which is used in 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 uh, layer three layer three networking. So there, I want to talk more. I want and I want to structure most of the documentation, which will be on projectcontour.io, um, not in our just kind of GitHub documentation. The GitHub documentation is a reference manual, but I want to talk more about scenarios and the ways that you can use Contour um, to solve to uh, to solve problems that um, application teams have. Like how do I how do I serve part? How do I split my application? How do I serve it out of two clusters? How do I serve it from uh, two pods? How do I do how do I do a rolling deployment? All of these questions, and that's the thing that I want to add as examples as tutorials. Um, if you look on the Envoy site, they have a section called Learn, which is exactly the same thing. I want to learn how to do this specific thing. So th those are those are my goals for improving not just the, the factual documentation, but the um, uh, resources for using Contour to solve particular problems that application administrators and developers have. Sounds awesome. Thank you, Dave. All right, do we have any other questions? All right, then um, we're going to close it out today. Uh, thank you so much, um, the Contour team. Thank you so much, uh, Contour community here for, for joining us. Uh, we'll put this up on YouTube shortly. So um, yeah, for now, chat with us on Slack and uh, have a lovely rest of your week. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.